In today's episode, we'll be covering the basic of arrays, what they are, and why they're so useful. Now, we spent the last few episodes talking about variables and how great they are for storing singular bits of information for making our code more simplistic. But one of the biggest drawbacks that come with variables is their inability to hold more than one piece of differing information. For example, let's say you're making an app which allows users to create a grocery list. Well, there's no real easy way to create lists using variables. Because it's not like you can have one variable store the names of seven or eight different food items. Even if you were to add multiple items to one string variable, you would have a lot of trouble doing simple tasks you might want from a list, like searching through it or splitting it. This is the problem that using arrays solves for us. An array is, as you may have guessed by now, a list. This can be a list of integers, a list of strings, and even a list of other arrays, which is something we'll talk about in a minute. Programmers use arrays when they want to store a lot of variables containing information that is all related to each other, such as a grocery list or a patient list at a hospital. Think of arrays as a column in Excel or Google Sheets. You have the title at the top, and then below it are a bunch of bits of information which all relate to the title. Arrays are super useful when using searching algorithms because programmers have developed methods of breaking down and using arrays to find specific information in arrays full of thousands of different variables. As an example, just to show how useful arrays are, let's say that you're a startup company of an app which has 100,000 users. Every time a user wants to log on to your app, they input their username, and then your company has to search through the information of all 100,000 of your users to see if that username has an account with your service. And then the same process would need to be completed with the passwords. An array would be able to contain all this information and make it easy to search through and find the account name without delay. The most important thing to note about arrays is how you reference each variable within them. Let's create a basic array called numbers, and inside of it put the digits 1 through 10. Now how we refer to each cell in the array is called that cell's index. Now you would think that the first integer in this array would be the first index, but that's actually not the case. Something very weird that programming languages do is refer to the first cell, or element as we call it, as the zeroth element in the array. That means that if we were talking about our array of numbers, the number 4 would actually be in the third index, 5 would be in the fourth, and so on. It's extremely weird and confusing, but it's one of those programming quirks you're going to have to memorize and commit to memory. If you don't follow this nomenclature and you refer to the last element of this array as the tenth, you get what is to refer to as an out-of-bounds error, since there is no tenth element and you're actually trying to reference the ninth. Another extremely important thing to note about arrays has to do with their size. When you initialize an array, you can do it either one of two ways. You can either populate it with the strings or integers that you want contained in the array right then and there, or you can define how many elements you want the array to be and then add strings or integers later. Once an array has been defined, there is no way to change the size of it. This means that if you have an array titled names with a size of 8 and then you try to add another name to the array, you will receive an error. Array sizes are final, so be careful when you're defining them. Another small thing to note is that when you initialize an array, you must determine which type of array it is right then and there. For example, you have to specifically say it will be an array of strings or integers. And also, you're not allowed to mix and match, meaning you can't have an array full of integers with a few strings and some doubles thrown in the mix. They have to all be the same type. The last thing we're going to cover today is something a little funky, which is putting arrays inside of arrays, which surprisingly you can do. If you make an array of arrays, it's referred to as a 2D or two-dimensional array. Think of these as matrices if you have taken algebra classes. Now, if you haven't, think back to our Google Sheets example, but instead of just columns, we would add rows as well. The way we index these is mostly the same, except we would have two numbers to index instead of one. We start with the row and then the column. So a number in the position 0, 2 would be in the first row, three columns down. Now you can also make three-dimensional arrays, but that's a little above what we're going to be covering today, so I'm going to cut it off there. In the next episode, we'll be talking about loops and why they're probably the best programming statement. If you enjoyed today's episode, consider subscribing for more interesting programming content. If you'd like to see the series as a whole, click the playlist to the right. Thanks for watching.